Hello, dear students. My name is Gaurav Bansal, and you are watching my YouTube channel, Indian Economy. I Gaurav Bansal. In the last video, I promised you that I will cover the practice questions on R E E R and N E E R, and we will also cover them from more technical perspective. We have already done a video on R E E R and N E E R, and in that we just discuss the conceptual aspect, the purpose of calculating the R E E R and N E E R. This time we go little technical into it. So let us start with the topic. The first point is how do we calculate the N double E R? So as we discussed previously, N represents nominal, E represents effective. So the exchange rate that we use on day to day basis is nominal but bilateral. For example. Dollar exchange rate, for example, pound exchange rate are all bilateral exchange rate. If we take an average of all those bilateral exchange rate, what we get is the broader average, and that is what we call effective exchange rate. So in N E E R, essentially, we are taking that average here. Okay. So, for example, one to N. Here, N represents the number of currencies from the basket or the countries from the basket. So, for example. Let us say average of six countries. So if we talk about six countries, then we take their currencies and take their average in this manner. First, let us say the dollar is there. Dollar has let us say thirty percent share in our trade payments. So thirty percent weightage is given to dollar, and then we see the dollar value zero point one zero. One two, okay. So let us say this is the exchange rate against the dollar. What we see day to day basis that one dollar is equal to eighty two rupees, eighty two three rupees, or eighty four rupees is essentially the U S exchange rate, the value of dollar in terms of rupee. But when we calculate our R E E R and E E R, or for any purpose actually, whenever we talk about exchange rate from Indian perspective, we have to look at how much will be one Indian rupee in terms of dollar. So that is one rupee is equal to zero point zero one two roughly. So that is what we take. Plus, let us say now euro has about twenty percent share. So twenty percent weightage to euro, and then multiply by the value of euro. Okay, zero point let us say zero one two p. Similarly, let us say twenty percent weightage is for yuan. The Chinese yuan, so the weightage multiplied by the exchange rate against yuan. So let us say that exchange rate is close to zero point zero eight two. Okay, so let us say this is the value of yuan. Likewise, we take the value of all currencies and we take their average after that. Okay, so this is essentially what we are doing. S one divided by S two basically represents the exchange rate. Okay, dollar divided by rupee in a way. So that is what we are taking, and W I represents the weightage. So those weights we have shown here in this manner. So the formula is actually for geometric mean, but why to make it unnecessarily complex when the exam it doesn't require that. So. For the explanation purpose, I didn't use the geometric mean formula. I simply used the arithmetic mean formula. So in this formula, basically, we are looking at the simple average that we use on day-to-day -day basis. Whereas in reality, what we calculate is geometric mean. This does not change the concept of the problem. This doesn't change much. Only thing that geometric mean provides as an advantage against arithmetic mean is that it rules out the extreme. Let us say one currency is where we have very poor value against, or against one currency we have very high value. Now they will badly affect the overall average. That is what geometric mean prevents. That is the reason why we take geometric mean. But again, let us not go into arithmetic mean and geometric mean right now. The formula that we have written is essentially for geometric mean. So basically, what are we doing? We are taking average. कि एवरेज कितना बैठता है सभी कंट्रीज के अगेंस्ट सभी करेंसीज के अगेंस्ट हाउ मच इज द एवरेज हाउ मच दैट एवरेज कम्स आउट टू बी नाउ एज वी हैव सीन 
the W represents the weights, N represents the number of currencies. For example, in this case, I've written three plus, let us say there are three more. So overall, let us say six. So likewise, we take the average and that gives us the NEER, how much on average rupee is changing. And that must always be weighted average because, for example, since dollar has more weightage in our trade then change against the dollar should have higher impact let us say the uae dirham has lower weightage or lower average in our trade or has lower dependence on our our trade depends less on uae so change against uae should have lesser impacts impact compared to dollar so that is essentially what we mean here Okay, so we take weighted average. We have seen what is an EER in that manner. Now, what is our EER? The same thing essentially, but we have added one more perspective here. Rest of the formula is same, it is weighted average, but here we also consider the comparative price index. For example, we take the CPI of America. Okay, so let us say in the same thing. We have 0.3 as the weight of dollar multiplied by 0.012, that is the weightage of dollar, multiplied by, let us say, the CPI of USA divided by the CPI of India. So, let us say US CPI is 108 divided by Indian CPI, which let us say is about 115. So, that also we multiply. Okay, so for example, if India has 15% inflation, India's CPI will be 115. If America has 8% inflation, their CPI will be 108. So we take average of these two and then we see the value of REER. So if inflation in India is more, then REER should go down because rupee is in denominator here. So if India comparatively has more inflation, the NEER value will go down further. If inflation in India is less compared to other countries, then your REER will be greater than NEER. So that is how we then calculate for all other currencies. Let us say 0 0.2 for Euro okay, multiplied by 0 0.0123. Okay, multiply by the comparative inflation, and that is how we do for all the currencies, and that is how we get the REER. So it is simple if you understand it that way, and then you can answer any question on it. So, what is the advantage of REER? REER also tells you that how much prices are changing comparatively in each country. So, in real terms, our exchange rate will fall. We have more inflation. That is essentially what it means. Now, let us look at the question. Question number one. With reference to the Indian economy, consider the following statements. The real effective exchange rate, REER, is an inflation adjusted average rate in which the rupee is exchangeable with the US dollar. Okay. Second, a decrease in REER denotes appreciation in the rupee value. Okay. And third, REER above 100 denotes that the rupee is undervalued. Now, let us analyze and understand these so point number one is that REER is inflation adjusted average rate. Fair enough, that is absolutely correct. At which rupee is exchangeable with the US dollar? No. At which rupee is exchangeable with a basket of currencies? Okay, That should come in this case. Not dollar, but a basket of the currencies. That should be. Second. Decrease in the REER denotes appreciation in rupee value. So, as we know, decrease in the exchange rate reflects depreciation. 
increase in the exchange rate reflects appreciation the same logic you use with both reer and eer you do not have to remember separately inka koi alag se logic nahi hota same logic they also follow okay so if improvement in exchange rate means appreciation same here if reer value increases rupee appreciates just like any other exchange rate number and eer value improves rupee appreciates that is exactly what it means okay so decrease does not reflect appreciation this reflects depreciation so i hope that is clear to you okay the first statement was also wrong now the third statement r e e r above 100 denotes that the rupee is undervalued so if r e e r is above 100 it shows that the rupee has appreciated r e e r above 100 actually denotes rupee is overvalued okay so this valuation actually come from a combination of a number of factors 100 is what where we have parity matlab dono currency ka purchasing power ek jaisa hai rupee has the same purchasing power as compared to the basket of currencies in which we are trading jo परचेसिंग पावर रुपये का है उतना ही परचेसिंग पावर बाकी करेंसी का ऑन एवरेज है ये हम कह सकते हैं जब आर ई आर हंड्रेड है वेन आर ई आर इज हंड्रेड देन परचेसिंग पावर इज सेम वेन द आर ई आर इज बिलो हंड्रेड देन वी कैन से द रुपीज अंडर वैल्यूड एट दिस प्राइस रुपीज परचेसिंग पावर इज लेस एंड अदर करेंसीज परचेसिंग पावर इज मोर दैट्स वाई दे फाइंड आवर प्रोडक्ट चीपर क्योंकि उनकी करेंसी की परचेसिंग पावर ज्यादा है तो वो हमारे प्रोडक्ट्स को सस्ते में खरीद सकते हैं दैट इज व्हाई इट डिक्रीज इन एक्सचेंज रेट बेनिफिट से करेंसी इन ट्रेड सो सेम लॉजिक अप्लाइज फॉर आर ई आर एन ई आर यू डू नॉट हैव टू अप्लाई स्पेशल लॉजिक से सेम एनी ऑफ द एक्सचेंज रेट इंक्रीजेस सेम इम्पैक्ट ऑन ट्रेड एनी ऑफ द एक्सचेंज रेट फॉल सेम इम्पैक्ट ऑन द ट्रेड ओके सो If exchange rate increases, it is appreciation. Trade declines. Whether it is N E E R, whether it is simple bilateral nominal, or whether it is real effective exchange rate. So I hope this is clear to you. Third statement is also wrong. So answer should be D. None in this case. So I hope this is clear to you. R E E R value above hundred means rupee is overvalued. R E E R below hundred means rupee is undervalued. when rupee is overvalued means it will be expensive for foreigners to buy indian products so we have discussed all the implications in this case let us look at the next question now now consider the following statement regarding nominal effective exchange rate and real effective exchange rate an eer is a measure of the value of country's currency against a basket of foreign currencies weighted by trade share with each currency country so that is absolutely correct that is exactly what an eer is and that is what we have discussed so this statement gives you absolutely clear definition of what an eer is okay it is a weighted average okay weighted by the trade share and it is average value second r e e r or just n e e r by considering the relative price level between the home country and its trading partner that is exactly what we have done so second statement is also correct in this case this is also correct now third the rise in r e e r indicates that a country's goods have become more competitive in international market now apply some logic we have discussed increase in r e e r means appreciation and that means rupee is overvalued and when rupee is overvalued at that price or at that level foreigners will find it more expensive to purchase from india and indians will find it cheaper to buy from abroad because rupee has more purchasing power so it leads to less competitiveness हमारे लिए एक्सपोर्ट करना और कठिन हो जाएगा हमारे लिए एक्सपोर्ट करना और मुश्किल हो जाएगा सो इट विल बिकम मोर डिफिकल्ट फॉर अस एंड लेस कॉम्पिटेटिव फॉर अस 
if rupee or eer value increases okay that is why every country prefers or loves depreciation or devaluation to some extent not completely and not to a very large extent but a managed devaluation which can give them trade competitiveness without putting too much import burden that is what every country prefers so second statement should also be clear second question one and two only are correct in this case last question is 2022 pyq so with reference to indian economy consider the following statement an increase in nominal effective exchange rate indicates the appreciation of rupee so i told you koi fark nahi padta hai ki reer hai and eer hai ya simple exchange rate likha hai real exchange rate likha it doesn't matter if it is written increase in exchange rate it means appreciation simply so increase in ner indicates appreciation of course clear Absolutely correct. Now, second, an increase in RER indicates an improvement in trade competitiveness. When RER increases, that leads to appreciation again, and appreciation decreases trade competitiveness. So, this statement is wrong. Third, an increasing trend of domestic inflation relative to inflation in other countries is likely to cause increasing divergence between an RER and RER. so what is the difference between an eer and rer the comparative inflation if the two countries have same inflation rer value will be same as an eer okay what were we doing we were doing this r double e r is equal to n double e r multiplied by the price level in other country divided by price level in domestic country now if the prices in the domestic country on average increase at the same level as the other countries then rer and ner will be same because then this ratio will be one and there will not be a gap but if these value vary a lot matlab dono countries mein alag alag rate pe inflation hai aur bahut usme difference hai then they will diverge the value of rer and ner will be too much different from each other that is exactly what it means so rer and ner will diverge if relative inflation is different and if that relative inf inflation is less then they will be converging or if it is same then they will be same so it is an straightforward analysis and i think now it will be clear to you answer should be c one and b only so with this we have done further discussion on rer and ner and i hope this is cleared all your doubts still if there is any doubt please post your question in the comment i will answer that and also kindly share more of these videos kindly comment on these videos because this really improves the youtube score of my videos and improves the spread and awareness of the channel thank you